Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about semantics. The lesson is going to be called what semantics and semantic features. So what's semantics? Semantics is simply the study of meaning. Semantics usually looks into the conventional meaning of words and sentences. What's the meaning of that? It means that we look at the normal meaning that we all agree on, regardless of the context. If we speak about red, we all agree that it's a color, and some of us think of red as good luck, other, uh, others think of it as bloody, but this is not what semantics is concerned about. Semantics doesn't care what you think about red. It cares about what everyone knows about red is that, is that red is a color. How are we going to study semantics? We rely on things to help us. We rely on the semantic features. What are these semantic features? Semantic features are pieces of information given to specify the meaning of any word, whether it's a noun, a verb, an adjective, or an adverb. Imagine it as a game of Arosti. There's a game called Arosti, it's a guessing game, where children play together and try to guess something. You give them features about that word, that you want them to guess until they guess it. Let's play it now. Let's say I'm going to talk about a toy. The toy is a male. The male toy is a cowboy. And it's in animation. Um, some of you might have guessed it already. The toy is, as you guess, and, uh, and as you see, is Woody. Okay, if you guessed it, you guessed it with the help of the features. How do we write the semantic feature? Okay, there are two ways to write a semantic feature. First of all, if the feature describes something that exists in the word, we write brackets and you write plus before the feature. Example here, when you're speaking about the rose, it's concrete. What's the meaning of concrete, you tell me? I'll tell you that the meaning of concrete is something that you can touch or you can smell, you can hear, you can look at, you can see, this is a concrete object. It's not abstract. An abstract idea is something that you cannot feel. A concrete object is something that you can feel with your normal senses. Beauty, for example, is abstract, it's not a concrete. Okay, another feature that exists in the rose is that the rose is a blend. And another feature is that it's a flower. So, here you have it. The rose is concrete, it's a blend, and it's a flower. We write plus, plus, plus to show us that these features are there in the rose. Now, how about the features that are missing in the word? If the feature describes something missing in the word, you write brackets and you write minus. For example, if you have a rose and you know it's not animate, what's the meaning of animate? Animate it means it moves. The rose obviously can't move on its own, so it's not animate. And minus rock. What's the meaning of minus rock? It means it's not a rock. The rose is not a rock, obviously. 
and minus abstract. It's not abstract, as we said before. It's concrete. So since it's not, it's, it's, it's since it's concrete, it isn't abstract. All right. Now, why do we use these semantic features? We use the semantic features to help us to distinguish near synonyms, understand semantic relations, and explain incongruity. Explain incongruities. So, we will discuss them one by one. First, the, distingu uh, the distinguishing of near synonyms. Let's say we have two words, and they are near synonyms. The words are A and B. We'll try to guess, guess what are A and B together. Let's say both of them are animate. Okay, they both move. Both of them are human. Mm, since they're animate, it's normally that they are human. You didn't add much. Or... You did add because some animals are move, so this is another piece of important information about A and B. They're human. They're both female. Mm hmm. Now it's we were we're ha getting more details. Now they're different. One of them is a parent. The other is young. You might have get them already. A. Well, if you said mother, and B, if you said girl, you're correct. So that's how we use sem the um, semantic features to distinguish near synonyms. So if someone never knows the meaning of the word mother, and never knows the meaning of the word Girl, it's not enough to tell them that it's animate, human, and female. You have to give a features that distinguish these near synonyms from each other. Another thing that semantic features do is that they help us understand semantic rela relations, meaning that some features imply other features. For example, a minus animate implies minus human. If I have an object that doesn't move, it certainly isn't human. Another thing, some features are bipolar, meaning that one of um, these features is one of two opposites. So, if you have something that's plus male, it means that it's minus female. So, features show me that there are two opposites, the male and the female. If something is plus male, it's automatically minus female. Another thing that uh, semantic features do is that they explain incongruities. What's the meaning of incongruities? It means that something that are not matching these shouldn't exist together. Here, look at the sentence. Colorless green ideas sleep furiously. Hmm. Look at them word by word. Imagine this situation with your mind. Try to imagine it. Colorless green. Ideas sleep furiously. Sleep calmly is normal, but to sleep furiously doesn't happen, does it? If you look at the features of the words, you can see that colorless means minus color. You don't have a color here. Green has a feature of a color. It's a color. So here you have a contradiction. Here what we have here is a con. Contradiction means that two things that exist together, that they are not supposed to be in the same place. Okay? Now, green here is used also to, to describe ideas. Green is concrete. Why is it concrete if you can 
Remember with me, concrete is something that you can feel. Green is something that you can absolutely see. But ideas are abstract. You cannot feel ideas. You cannot feel them with your senses. So here is another contradiction. Green is concrete. Ideas is abstract. Sleep is an inactive action. Doesn't there is no activity in sleeping? You're sleeping. You're supposed to be calm. Then you have furiously. Furiously is plus active. Plus active means that you have to be active to do something furiously. Here's another contradiction. As Woody and Buzz Lightyear here are telling us, you have contradictions everywhere. So, semantic features here help us to explain these contradictions, to see it. If you have something in the same sentence, you have a minus color, and the plus color means that you have a contradicting sentence, means that this sentence is semantically wrong. It's, it's wrong. It's ca it can't happen in semantics. So, we don't need any more contradictions, do we?